So how did you find out about the part of Isaac and what was your thought process when you found out you were going to be playing in artificial intelligence? Well, I was in London um, at the time, just being a, you know, theater actor. I was, uh, I just finished doing War Horse in the West End, which was very fun. Um, and I was suddenly twiddling my thumbs, kind of figuring out what to do next. And this random audition came through to fly to LA and to work with Seth MacFarlane playing an alien. And I just thought that, that this is mad, but I, I'm going to work really hard at all this audition and, and see what happens and did the tape. Uh, and then, yeah, the next day we, we'd heard that Seth had watched the tape and liked it, which was just completely bizarre. Um, fast forward through, uh, a few weeks of negotiations and, uh, trying to get my visa in order, which was a bit hairy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I arrived in LA, uh, New Year's Day 2017. And uh, yeah, a few days later, I was in, you know, getting into the suit and trying it out and figuring out how the hell I was going to play this character. And um, yeah, that's how it all kicked off, really. That's awesome. So you had the opportunity this season to spend a lot of time out of costume, more so than you had in prior seasons. Does it make it any more difficult to capture the essence of what Isaac is when you're not wearing the suit? Or have you done it long enough at this point where it's just kind of second nature? At the start of the whole thing, we didn't know that, I don't think Seth even knew that there'd be a human Isaac, um, that he'd, he'd be seen in his human form. And I remember when it first came about, I was talking to Seth about it and he'd said that obviously I rehearse without the suit on and um, what he'd been doing if he was in a scene with me or whatever he'd been watching what I was doing as as me and effectively what you see with human Isaac is what I'm doing under the suit I have been all this time I have to do that to to sort of project it through the suit if that makes sense um so really it was incredibly logical it was very um it was a very smooth transition into into human Isaac because I was doing it already, basically. <laughs> I'm curious about how long it takes for you to get into costume and have there been any wardrobe malfunctions ever? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it's one ongoing malfunction, the Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you saw how many uh, Kalons were at the end there. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of Kalons in this show and they need to bring in teams of um, extra wardrobe people to to attend all these Kalons because I mean we we got it down to about me with Isaac with my sort of amazing Ferrari racetrack team we got it down to about six minutes I think um, wow obviously with season three it was a whole different uh, outfit so that had a lot more moving parts the thing is in that six minutes if circuitry breaks or lights go out it can be anything up to like half an hour for it to be uh to be sorted and you know those suits were not popular with a lot of people often <laughs> throughout the last uh three seasons but you know they look great don't they so i am curious too did you do a master class to teach the other people playing kalons how to emulate isaac so you could all be uniform yeah we did kalon school um <laughs> On the bridge, in fact, actually, it was quite fun. Um, and so, yeah, we had the first time uh, we had lots of Kalon on uh, come on. Uh, they hired a lot of dancers um, who obviously are very good at moving. Um, and I had to teach. It's very odd. It's very weird to teach someone something that you've you've not been taught yourself. So you have you've sort of pulled it out of the you know miasma and uh, and just sort of. <laughs> invented it i guess and i had to sort of figure out what i was actually doing um you know a lot of it is in the hands uh a lot of it is in the walk i guess it's just there's a stillness about it you know and and a, a non-roboticness about it i was you know trying to keep away from c3po and all of that uh so yeah so yeah it was quite fun to do that and then in season three i was like get some puppeteers because um, I've said this a few times, but what I realized in season two is that when I'm in the suit, I'm a puppeteer. I'm not an actor. And, you know, puppeteers actually really get uh, 
the the minutiae of a performance and so they're really good at getting in the suit um i don't know if we did get any puppeteers but i did ask them <laughs> <laughs> i also really enjoyed watching you this season and in the first episode isaac helped facilitate a very delicate discussion about suicide um and in general the show tackles a lot of deep philosophical and moral issues have there been any episodes that have impacted you more than others or how do you feel about helping tell these stories yeah, I mean, it, it, this season's been, you know, quite heavy hitters, hasn't it? You know, lots of, um, you know, big themes dealt with. I think, you know, I've never been touched by suicide. I'm very lucky. Um, so uh, that was just, that episode was just a, an eye-opener for me, I guess. Um, but with the, I think, I think Topa's story was, really moving for me i think you know that's been a, a general response hasn't it mm. um but yeah with with the with her episode where she has gender reassignment surgery i think it's really interesting i i just remember it happening when we were filming it and thinking there are going to be people in decades time who will remember watching that episode and say that's when i saw who i was i saw that i wasn't i i realized and i understood why i didn't feel happy um and i think that's amazing i think that's if you can do that with an entertaining television program then um you, you're onto something great absolutely we uh we also saw a different side of isaac this season there's the episode where you were granted full emotion and you got to really emote, yes. which was super fun to see. Um, there is a theory, however, that even though Isaac lost his emotions, that on his own, he's been slowly evolving a form of emotion on his own that he just doesn't fully understand. Now, obviously, without confirming whether that theory is true or not, is there a way that you approach Isaac's behaviors as an actor? I yes, so he is he's changing, isn't he? He is evolving, and I think that's because he is he is reprogramming himself. This is my theory, and he's doing it not to be more human, which is a very data track, uh, you know, trait, isn't it, from Star Trek? He he's literally built for humans, isn't he? Um, data, I think, mm. and you know, Isaac is not that; he's an alien, you know, and Isaac is going to stay himself true to himself in that respect but he's not living on Kalon surrounded by his own kind he has to he has to get on with the world around him and to do that he has to start he's, he has been slowly reprogramming reprogramming himself to be i guess a better partner a better father or, um a better a, well, a more efficient i think that's probably the better word to use um crew member diplomat comedian uh the list goes on really but yeah and i think and i think what happens when he reprograms himself reprograms himself is that there might be glitches now and again that he mm. can't control which brings about a sort of weird form of uh natural evolution i guess it's when things go wrong slightly wrong that you have change isn't it slightly tying into that we also got to see isaac and charlie's blossoming relationship this season and that all changed um at the culmination of the episode domino how do you feel the loss of this friendship will impact isaac after the fact if at all i think for isaac what he would have seen and felt well, not felt but what he would have taken from that was he'd have seen charlie go from loathing him i mean literally loathing him to forgiving him you know forgiveness is it's such a biological trait. And, you know, when, when would Isaac ever need to forgive anybody? I don't think he can be particularly offended. Um, but uh, I think that's probably the takeaway lesson for him. The power of forgiveness. Yeah. One of the charms of Isaac's character is his ability to deliver very inappropriate dialogue in such a straightforward manner. Uh, and we saw a lot of that in the episode Twice in a Lifetime during your scenes with Charlie. How often do you get caught up in the humor of a scene and just break down, just lose it, start laughing? 
Well, I mean, it's particularly difficult if I'm humanizing because I've got to keep that shit tight, right? Um, <laughs> and for example, in the episode where Charlie and I go down to the planet together to get the um, Dysonian, um, the do you remember the 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 arm wrestler in the dive bar? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy was trying so hard to make me laugh, and he—I mean, he was—he was making me crack up, but I really had to keep my shit together when I was. Um, filming because you know they it's all about the contrast but his face was couldn't have moved more i think during that scene whereas mine had to remain utterly uh still yeah oh yeah i think people definitely try to particularly if i'm in human form they try to um, make me laugh um but yeah i mean there's lots of there's lots of fun happening on the set you know we're always having laughs i mean there are some some jokers in the cast I'm not one of them. <laughs> I leave it, I leave it to, to the crazy guys to do that. But um, thank God for them, really, because when it's three o'clock in the morning and all you want to do is cry or go to bed or drink a large glass of wine, and you can't do any of those things. Um, they're, they're, they're an uplift that you need. Do you have a favorite part of playing, Isaac? Is there anything that surprised you by playing a synthetic being that you didn't expect when you first took the role? Well, I've never played one before. Um, but yeah, I, what I, could, I like about him is his, you know, he's very logical. And uh, I don't know, I maybe I'm not that logical. Maybe I find it hard to to, to let logic rule when I'm making decisions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I kind of appreciate him for that. That's been, you know, quite helpful. Um, and I also love his curiosity. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself to to be more curious about the world and, you know, go out there and get involved with things. So I, I quite like that about him. Yeah. You talked about this a little bit about what you have to do underneath the suit. And I just wanted to mention a particular scene in the episode Electric Sheep, because you are able to convey with just a walk down a corridor such sadness as Isaac stops and looks out at the stars and everything. How is it that you're able to take those like micro movements and project them outward from inside the suit to where we can feel those emotions by watching it on the screen? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, what you see when you see human Isaac, that's what I'm doing under the suit, um, which made it a very gentle transition when I did start playing him as a human as well. Um, uh, I don't know. I think it's it. I think it's a, a sparsity and a it's an efficiency of movement. Perhaps it's weird because when you see him and you think, oh, he's he's emoting. I mean, he isn't, is he? You know, he's we're projecting that onto him, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really interesting because you can say he's thinking. He does a lot of thinking, lots of pondering. Um, contemplating, and I think um, I think if you keep the performance as simple as possible, then that allows the audience to be able to um, project what they want to see onto him. Um, yeah, maybe that's it. Figured it out as I went along there. I like that. <laughs> I. Love asking people this, but what is your hope in that the impact you will leave behind by playing Isaac, that people will see the show and hopefully feel from you playing this character? Yeah, uh, I was really pleasantly just surprised to see um, how many people who um, identify as autistic or um, sort of on that kind of spectrum um, saw themselves see themselves in Isaac. Um, and I've had people, you know, come up to me and tell me that or message me or whatever. And I just think that's, that's really cool because, you know, I don't think that, um, that is, 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 is very represented on TV. And when it is, it's either done for comedy, um, uh, or, you know, and there's certainly never heroes. And I think Isaac gets to be, um, a hero, doesn't he, in a way. And for them to, I think, I think for anyone to be able to look at Isaac and go, it's okay to be different. It's okay to be, you know, on the outskirts of 
whatever society you used to belong to or are trying to belong to. Um, I think that's that's enough for me, really. And that it's okay to be like that. Yeah. You can shine. I think that is all the time we have, unfortunately. But uh, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. And like I said, we were looking forward to this so much. So thank you for taking the time with us today. You thank too, you so guys. much. Yeah, no, thank you. Very nice to meet you both.